Hi, this is going to be part one of my uh, Mishmet BF109 E3 build. Um, I thought I'd go through where I'm, where I'm done so far. So basically, let's get this open here. Um, I've started to, to um, remove all the parts for the um, cockpit, basically. So go through here. I'm going to start gluing this together and show you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to be trying to use, we're going to be using some of the new uh, quick setting, extra thin, see what that's like. Um, try and bring you in a little bit closer, so the light isn't actually that good. Ah, maybe that's, is that a bit better? Yeah, that looks a lot better actually. Um, so, um, we'll actually go through the steps here, so I'll bring this over here. There we go, that's better. So we're starting with these, uh, these parts, I think uh, these are, um, they go in the front here, under, perhaps uh, underneath the guns. Um, I don't know whether they connect the shells, I think they probably came out, but um, somebody else out there will probably know. Um, so basically we've got four parts we need here. And we're going to get these, there is some injection pin marks on here. Um, I suspect... Are we going to see those? Is the question. Um, unfortunately, they only go one way around, and they are going to show the injection pin mark that way, definitely. Now, whether once the two sides are together, we'll have to test fit this. And in fact, that doesn't fit in there particularly well at all. Do a little bit of, um, and I'm not yes, I have, there we go. I've got some sanders here, so we're just going to try and just see if we can get this to fit in a little better. I had sanded and cleaned most of these parts up. Not that they needed a lot of cleaning, to be honest. They're all pretty good. extremely tight fit. It's quite nice. That's a bit better already actually. And in fact I think with a bit of glue in there and hold it down I think that'll now be okay. Hopefully having the quick setting will be an advantage here. In fact, I've got a peg, so we're going to hold that in there, make sure that stays in. And then quickly do the same on the other one. In fact, that one actually fits quite well. A bit of extra thin down there. Probably don't need too much here. And that does actually seem to be drying quite quickly. Certainly appears to be quicker, I would say, than the standard Tamiya Extra Thin. I don't think I'm even going to need to clamp that. Uh, these parts then go together. They have got location pins, let's see how they go. Yeah, and what's actually quite handy is uh, the injection pin on that side, you can't see. And you can just see the other one on there. I don't think it's going to be that noticeable. Um, I do need to clean up a slight seam line on here though. Um, just to get rid of that. Unfortunately there's quite a lot of seam lines here. I'm not too worried about the one in, sorry, can't see that, there's a bit of a seam line in there, but the gun will be in there, so nobody's going to see that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a seam line there, just clean them up. This one I must have already, it's not actually too bad, because I've already done it. And there's a tiny bit on this side. Sorry, I think the camera's, I'll just bring you out a little bit there for a minute. 
Okay. Do we need to do any other clean up on that? No, that looks pretty good to me. Get in there with the extra thin again. Okay, so we've then got these two plates here, um, E57, hopefully I'm going to pick the right bits, because there is a couple of them, that's definitely that part there, and then we've got E45, which is this piece here, again, there's quite a lot, there is some injection pin marks on all of these pieces, um, I don't think you're going to see them though, which is the good, they've been put in places where it just won't matter. Yeah, that you're not going to see any injection pins on there. Thank goodness. So we don't need to worry too much about cleaning those up. The old extra thin round here. Fairly generous amount there. Hold that together for a few moments. And Yeah, this definitely seems to be setting a lot quicker, so we can then yep, pop this piece straight on here, he says, hopefully, if the holes are in the right spot, they're quite, in fact that's going to clip in and hold without any glue really, but we will put some in, in fact, I have to be a bit careful here because it's squidged out a bit of the plastic, I have to clean that up. over there. So then we've got here the sort of a seat adjustment I guess is this piece here and um, the seat itself is quite plain um, although there is a little bit of detail on the back although I suspect you're not really going to actually see any of that. Um, and of course we've got um, photo etch uh, seat belts so that will neaten that up a bit here. Um, so the next bit is our seat component. Try not to lose any bits here. We've got a couple of little bits there. So try not to confuse the. There we go. And we've got this piece and this piece and a sort of part there and over there. So, we've got to be a bit careful here because there's a slightly different, yeah, this, we may need slightly different glue, maybe easier, I'm going to use, this is actually some of the white top glue from Tamiya, but I've put a thinner, because the brush that comes with it is quite large, I've put some of the, i put one of the extra thin um, brushes on there so that's better. And obviously this glue isn't quite as thin, so it doesn't go all over the place when you're trying to attach these smaller parts sometimes. It would be easier if I had a third hand, because then we could probably use the extra thin, but you've kind of got to get it to hold. And again, make sure we get this the right way round. Otherwise, we're going to have a wonky seat. So, holding this all together is going to be a bit of a challenge, but we'll see. Again, this doesn't dry quite as quick, so you've got a bit of time to sort of manipulate it into place. It just seems to hold things a little bit better when you've got these delicate parts. Okay, that looks fairly, I'll set that over there to one side. 
Okay, so the next parts we've got here, I'm not doing this exactly in order, but we've also got the wheel here, uh, which you need to make up with some of the photo edge parts we haven't just prepared. So let's have a look what we've got here. Right, I should have had this uh, a little more ready. Now these are quite thick. Now if I was going to need to bend them, I'd probably be heating this up to try and make it more sort of flexible, but as it's this wheel, I'm quite happy for it to be fairly, um, you know, fairly rigid. Unlike the other old front switch, <coughs> this stuff is actually quite, quite thick. Okay, so I've got this little plastic. Got this gives you um, a sort of stiff uh, base to work from, which is best for cutting photo edge. You don't want it to bend on, a, on your sort of flexible mat, it's much more likely to bend. Um, my, I did put a new blade in my, <laughs> we're doing well because I can't find my scalpel at the moment. Well prepared, no, it's over here. So we need here part uh, 25, which is this wheel, and um, we're going to try and carefully remove this. This is a nice sharp new blade. It's definitely a tougher photo etch than, than some I've worked with. Oh, that's actually coming away okay. Right, there we go. Put that over there. This is going to need a bit of clean up. Um, you're better off with a metal uh, file for this, which again, I'm not very well prepared. I have got some metal files somewhere. Okay, we'll see if we can actually remove it with the blade, which we may be able to do. Let's get the worst of the sort of burring off here. Just using a very, very sharp blade to try and just trim that, clean it up a bit. Try not to damage the shape of the wheel. Actually, that's coming up quite well. Yep, that's okay. We've then got our plastic part, E50. We see here, let me bring this over. Guess the black and then we've got part um, E41, which is this little piece here. Now, unfortunately, here, obviously, we're not going to be able to use um, the Tamiya, that's not going to work. Let's put the tops on those so I don't smell them. Um, but we have got some good old Rocket, Rocket Rapid. Um, fast setting, so let's try that. Um, bit of a cocktail stick, and in fact, here we go. And I normally put a tiny dot up on here so we don't squeeze it everywhere. It's going to fit. Mm, no, well, maybe. No, I think we're going to have to either make the hole slightly bigger in here. Maybe able to do that with a sharp knife. Yep. It's actually going on quite tight, but then um, be careful to not to do what I've just done, which is slightly bend the actual metal. Fortunately, it needs to be a slightly larger hole. I'm literally just twisting a knife in there to just, it's only slightly, so I'm hoping this will just be enough to take the edge off. I can't 
can't believe I've managed to bend that, but hopefully, careful. And there we go. And then gonna put a tiny tiny amount of super glue just to hold that onto there. And then we're coming. <laughs> okay. piece top not quite sure why they decided to put one piece photo etch on the other piece just to be plastic but um right just gonna line that up hopefully we've got enough time before the super glue sets I'm also going to put a tiny bit of the Tamiya here to sort of hopefully just help cement that plastic bit into the sort of dowel that it's on there. And I'll set that to one side. Okay, what do we got next? Um, the pedals or the instrument panel? Um, Let's get the instrument panel in here, which I've actually already pushed it into place, it sort of fits in, but we'll put a little glue behind there. Now, there's a decal for this, which I think we'll probably use, um, or we'll certainly have a look at it. Um, obviously this all needs to be painted first, so I'm kind of setting all these little sub-assemblies, if you like. Um, first, um, I haven't got, the, well we'll do the pedals in a minute, but I'm going to just get the main uh, cockpit floor done here. So we've got part E60, uh, which is our control column. Uh, make sure you put it the right way around. That's right, how many can see that there. It's kind of this sort of uh, part going forward. Again, Get a bit of our extra thin in there. Let's hold that in place. Um, now, this part I'm not fitting because it shouldn't be there on an E series. It's incorrect. This, I believe, is kind of where the uh, the rear of the gun. It's got a no nose gun no, uh, running through the engine and through the nose. This is kind of the rear end of the gun. And this is kind of just a, like a protective box, I suppose, for want of a better term. Um, so, but the, obviously quite clearly, E series um, doesn't have a nose gun, so it shouldn't really be there. So we're not bothering with that part. Um, there will be some holes to fill, which will um, once everything else is on there. In fact, I think what we'll do here is that's filled now. Um, Bit of deluxe perfect plastic putty should do the job. And somewhere, I'm not having a very good day for finding things today. Okay, I'll come back to that in a minute. The phone one tends to go a bit hard at the top there. Uh, we've got another cocktail stick here, I think that's one we didn't use. And we'll just fill in the three holes. Yep, yeah. so there's these two at the front here. With a tiny bit, I've got too much on there really. Sorry, not in camera there, apologies. So we're just filling these holes. I mean, to be honest, you probably won't really notice them once the instrument's panel's in anyway, but just in case, this one here we 
probably will, so that's definitely got to be done. Doesn't want to stay. I've normally got a sort of spatula for this sort of thing, it's much better, but I can't lay my hands on it at the moment, which is annoying because I'm sure it was there the other day. Unfortunately, it's, it's just pushing through the hole. Mm. I want to make sure it's slightly raised out, and we'll sand it off. Make sure it's a nice clean fill. Okay, so let's put that over there for the minute. Pop the top back on there. Okay, so we've got our seat part, which we can probably fit now. It's literally just so far everything's fitted nicely the holes are all the right sort of size and it slots in again I think there's still a little flexibility in this from the um, the white top glue it takes a lot longer to dry which means we can make sure it's all sort of square before we glue it in here like so and then there's a couple of extra little parts here there's a sort of almost like a handbrake lever E32 and we've got a E52, not quite sure what this little box of tricks is, um, but that needs to go on there as well. And again, that goes on here. What's nice is it's kind of you can one hole's bigger than the other, so you can't get it in the wrong way round. Well you could I suppose if you forced it, but <laughs> it would be quite tricky. That's that bit there. Let's get that handbrake part on there if I can find it's underneath. Let's see if we can trouble this because this dries quite quick. Trying to put it on the part and then slot the part in isn't always that easy. And this goes here. And although the instructions don't tell you. I suspect it would be much easier to put this part in first before you try to put the wheel in this um, sort of adjustment wheel here otherwise it's going to be quite tricky just trying to straighten it up a little bit and we can pop that in there Unfortunately, that's not quite. Let's get that in there. There we go. Just again, the glue hasn't quite set, which in a way is good because it just gives us the ability to manipulate it slightly. And we're just coming underneath. Make sure there's glue in these bits to make sure they're set properly. So that's that bit. So, really, what we've now got here is we've got the two pedals to do. Um, we can, I don't want to put the pedals on yet because, sorry, again, I have a camera. Um, I don't want to put the pedals on yet because I need to let the, um, the putty dry and I know obviously I'll sand those parts and then we'll put them in, otherwise they'll just get in the way. So we'll have to set that to one side. We've now got these sub-assemblies, we've got that one there. Um, I have got the seat taken off um, and we have got these other bits here. Uh, the panel for here, sorry, and obviously there's the part for see this bit we can attach here to this. So this is kind of the back of the um, instrument panel here. Um, what's not overly clear? Ah, I see. So this actually goes there like that. And we're going to run a bit of extra thin in there. sort of at 90 degrees, not wonky to the extra instrument panel, that looks quite good. Again, we'll just set that over there to one side. Um, 
I guess we can make the pedals up. That bit can be done. Um, so we've got two more photo etch bits here. Or you can actually use the plastic parts. Um, if you see here, it gives me the option um, somewhere. So yeah, cut, remove, um, and then there's a sort of choice option here between either the metal parts or the um, plastic parts. Now, um, I don't know if I've got the plastic parts to show you so you can see the difference. Um, uh, I'm sure one of these two sprues. There you go. So obviously, you know, they're just moulded sort of plastic bits. There we go. With some little sort of dents in them, holes. Whereas obviously the metal parts are proper all the brass um, photo etch parts are thinner and they've kind of got the holes you know, right the way through. So we're going to go for the metal, uh, the photo etch parts. So again, I'm just going to carefully cut this off. Basically, we want to get the cockpit, you know, most of it built so we can get a, um, a coat of paint on it and um, then we can paint the finer details, or some of the finer detail parts we will do separately. Um, others will will just uh, hand brush um, as we go along, sort of thing. So again, we we'll need to clean up these a little. I'm just using the knife to very carefully cut that part off. It's not always so easy on these rounder parts, but we'll have a go. And then again, the same here. So we've got those. Now we've got interesting, we've got these additional photo inch parts which kind of make like a loop. Um, I suspect though they're only yeah they're for the plastic parts only if you choose the plastic part option. If you use the um, photo etch, although it's not clear, it just says bend. You're just going to bend the metal part up. This metal part here, um, you're going to just bend it up and over. So let's find our two pieces that we need to attach here. That's these two pieces here. Um, let's just. I didn't clean these particularly well, actually. Let's clean that piece up a bit better. So what they're telling you to cut here by the looks of things is just literally the sort of locating pegs. Um, let's bring this in a bit closer. Sorry, it focuses these sort of pegs um, for the photo etch. Obviously for the plastic parts, they've probably got holes in the back, but obviously the photo etch hasn't. So we're kind of just really cutting these off. Um, and then we'll kind of just almost lay the photo etch across. So let's have a quick look at this. Again, you're going to have to kind of use a bit of common sense really to better positioning. Um, I don't know if my super glue is already set. Yep, it is. So we're going to need a tiny bit more super glue here. This is kind of my super glue. It's not really, I don't really use it for paint much nowadays. Um, I have got one for paint. Oh, sorry, we seem to have gone a bit out of focus there. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to literally touch a little tiny drop of this here. And then just double checking that I've got this the right way around. We're going to pop that on there. Woo! Roughly in the middle of the part. I mean, I don't, again, you don't, the instructions aren't overly clear. Obviously, if you were using the plastic parts here, you'd have the two pin locations. So, roughly, that part should go in the middle. So, that looks about right where I've got it there. We'll then come and do the next one. And I 
they seem to have mislaid. There we go, that's the other part. So again, we'll remove these two bits, these two little lugs. And hopefully we can then, literally what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip a tiny bit of super glue and pop it on. Trying, of course, as always, not to glue my fingers to anything. And then we'll leave those again to one side. So, um, pretty much what I'm going to do, probably off camera to be honest, we've got the gun sight here. Um, that I think is, uh, I'm not sure of the colour, but I think it's normally black. So we'll actually paint that separate before attaching it, so I won't attach it at this stage. Um, I'm going to get the um, cockpit part here sanded and get the rest of those bits on there. Um, but I'll then stick the um, pedals on and basically get the cockpit roughly buttoned up here um, and painted. Um, which is probably going to be, I imagine, the yeah, in fact it actually says here, RML2 Grey. Um, I've got a few versions of RML2 Grey. Um, I will probably, in this case, um, use the Mr. Hobby stuff. Um, although, actually, it's funny. I know a lot of people criticise the Vallejo colours. Um, I have got the Vallejo RML2. And although, when you initially look at it, you think, oh, that doesn't look right. Uh, sorry, this one looks right, or, you know, it, it, the, the, the Vallejo looks a slightly different colour and perhaps not quite right, more, more brown maybe than, than, than grey, green. Uh, but actually when they dry, um, I find the Vallejo is actually not really that far off. There's not massive difference really. Um, and I'm quite happy I'm not that fussy about the colour, as long as it looks roughly right. Uh, I'm good with that. Um, so that, that'll be that. Then I'll come back once I get to that sort of stage uh, with the painting. Um, I'll probably get the seat prepped with the photo etch here, um, although obviously we'll need to paint the seat. The photo etch, of course, in this kit isn't painted. Now, as it happens, I've got some Eddard uh, seat belts um, from uh, yeah, one thirty uh, second scale um, E7, I think it was. It was a tropical version, um, so I'm probably going to use those instead because obviously they don't have to be painted. Um, and I think that'll make life a little bit easier. So I'm probably not going to use these. <laughs> these will probably get used for something else. Um, so that, you know, it's always good for the spares of a box, that sort of thing. Um, so I'll get the seat painted. We'll get the seat painted all together. And then we'll start moving on to things like these um, bottles. And obviously it actually goes next onto the engine and the wings. And so on and so forth. But what I probably will try and do while I've got the... RML2 paint out, sorry, that's not a screen grabber. I'm probably going to get these done um, in the next part. In fact, uh, yeah, see, there's not really a lot of parts to fit here, so I'll get these out and get them glued on so they're all ready for painting. Um, and we can just, you know, pretty much blast everything with the RML02, and then I'll probably then come back. Um, so I'm not doing it quite as per the instructions, and then we'll come back and build up the engine. Um, and the, the, the wings. Not quite sure what to do about these guns here. It just seems as much as it'd be lovely to build them up, you're not going to see them. So what I will probably do is forget these at this stage. We'll get the, the, the wings and everything together. Um, then it, once everything's painted, literally at the end, um, I will probably just come in and fix these in you know, paint them separately and fix them in at the end of the build. But we'll see, once I get to the wings stage, um, I'll kind of make that sort of decision, really. Um, but I'm going to leave it there for now. I don't want to make the videos too long and too boring. Um, as I say, what I'll probably do is I'll kind of get the cockpit roughly finished, um, ready for paint, and then um, I'll do part two then. You can join me for the sort of painting stage. Um, as it happens, you know, I can pretty much paint here. Um, and film it because my extractor is literally um, to the right here. You can't see it in the screen, but it's literally there, and there's a window there as well, so um, I can extract straight out the window, so I can paint here on, in, in full camera. With the extractor on, obviously it'll be a bit noisy, but at least you know it's better for the health. Um, I have got a respirator mask, um, with which I certainly use for um, 
any non-acrylic paints normally, uh, certainly any of the sort of metallics type paints that I use, um, but obviously I probably won't use it for the video, we'll just use the extractor so I can talk over it. Okay, cheers. Well, thanks for watching part one. Um, I hope it wasn't too boring. Um, and come and join me in part two.